It's 33 days to the December polls. Hello and welcome to Election Brief. I'm Arba Kumsen. And coming up in this edition, Election Brief is brought to you by Petrosol. Clean fuel in full quantity. Smart lubricants. Quick to move, thick to protect. We are live on your DSTV channel 421 and GoTV channel 144 on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Follow Join News on TV. We stream live on my join online Dot com as well and coming up police service warns it will not tolerate any breach of the peace this country is currently enjoying as it prepares to deploy more than 62,000 fully armed officers across the country in readiness for the December 7 polls also electoral commission boss and national security minister summoned to parliament to brief the house on preparations towards ensuring a violence free elections in December and former president John Mahama launches a scathing attack on the special prosecutor Martin Amidu challenging him to proceed with investigations on his alleged involvement in the Airbus scandal things have been happening especially in the lead up to the election to take but um we'll bring you more on this uh, in election brief uh, Stay tuned, we'll, we'll be right back with more details. Thanks for staying with us here on Election Brief. Now, in our first story, the police administration is warning it will not entertain any breach of the peace as it prepares to deploy more than 62,000 fully armed police officers across the country for the next month's uh, presidential and parliamentary election. That's a stern warning from the Inspector General of Police, James Opong Bueno, who has been addressing a news conference on the readiness of the Election Security Tax Force ahead of the polls. The media in all the regions. This engagement will continue until the electoral process has come to an end. Ladies and gentlemen, we count on you to help in this endeavor. On election day itself, that is 7th December 2020, and the period before declaration of results by the electoral commission. We want operating centers, which we call the Joint Operation Centers for the DOCs, at the national, regional, and district level. These are situation rooms which will have monitoring teams. Ladies and gentlemen, as we have done in the past, some civil society groups will be allowed space at the DOCs to work with us in monitoring and clarifying issues. As election day approaches, we will put our, our channels for verification of security information. Media practitioners, commentators, and bloggers are expected to verify and validate information from such channels before disseminating them. This is to avoid unnecessary tension that may spark from misinformation. So that was the IGP James Opongbueno addressing the media earlier today in Accra on the police's uh, security or the security election security task force readiness for the December polls. Head of our security desk, Gifty Andopia, has ju just returned from that uh, press conference. He joins me in studio. So more than 52,000 security personnel to de deployed across the country in December. Yeah. What's the strategy? Well, specifically, we're looking at 52,794. Uh, Let me go through that again. 52,794 officers to be deployed. And this is within the context of police saying it has identified 6,128 hotspots or flashpoints mm -hmm. across the country. I think previously there was a figure that was put up that was a little about 4,000. But right now, from the IGP himself, we're looking at 6,128 flash points. Mm -hmm. And in, within this context, we are releasing these men out there. Now, these men who will be deployed will be having special armbands. We're told that the special armbands are supposed to identify them, make it easy for the public to identify the 
officers who have been deployed to deal with election. Right. We know what happened in Iowa, so West were gone. The police doesn't want a repetition. So they say that Amban will be will be will have details of how it looks like so you can identify them on election day. Mm -hmm. They're also talking about the fact that or, um, the public are allowed to so you have the right to ask for identification if anybody puts himself up as a security person. Exactly. On that day, you have the right to ask those questions. Right. The BNI and the CID, by the way, will not be uniformed. All the men who will be, who will be deployed will be in their official uniform with the armbands, but the C CID and the BNI officials will not be mm -hmm. um, uniformed. And then there will be standby guards, or what the IGP calls the standby guards, who will be deployed to support with support from the Ghana Armed Forces. So it's not just the police, the Ghana Armed Forces. And although they say that they're So just to clarify, be, the standby guards yeah. are from the military. Is that it, the case? Not necessarily the military. Okay. The military. So in every operation, mm -hmm. you need to have a clear leader. Okay. And in this operation, this is a civil operation. It right. is led by the police okay. because the police are supposed to deal with everything civil. Right. But you do that with support from the Ghana Armed Forces. Okay. And sometimes you have them... Uh, stationed at their bases and they're called in. Okay. It looks to me like from what the IGP is saying, these people will be embedded with the police officers. Okay. But of course, the police officers will be the leaders in terms of operational right. um, decisions, etc. Right. They will have the support from people, from personnel from the Ghana okay. um, Armed Forces. Right. So apart from that, uh, they're saying that although they'll be focused on the hotspot to prevent some of the things that we've seen happen, electoral violence and all, they have learned from the registration. Lessons learned from the registration indicates that there are places you would uh, take for granted mm -hmm. and say they have not been identified as flashpoints. Mm -hmm. But those are the places that you actually have um, electoral violence cases. Right. So they're saying that there won't be any single polling station without an armed officer. Mm -hmm. So every polling station across the country will have at least one um, armed officer. Mm -hmm. um, let me wrap up with this one. The fact that uh, police says they've realized that people usually, or history shows that people usually go, ballot snatchers, for example, right. would go ahead with the operations by using uh, motorbikes. Mm -hmm. One thing that they, uh, and this was not, I need to make this clear, was not part of the plan that the police communicated to, to, communicated to us before we asked our questions. Okay. This was in response to a question asked by a reporter from Oman FM. Right. Uh, the police, uh, the IGP said, um, motorbikes will not be allowed more than 100 meters away from the uh, police, police station. stations okay yeah and that's something we can ask them for more and okay. they're hoping to respond in terms of distress calls mm -hmm. within at least 15 minutes mm -hmm. the issue has been raised that look police numbers when you call the police numbers you get very funny answers sometimes nobody picks up at all they're right. saying that they will communicate channels mm -hmm. through which people can you know phone into the police mm -hmm. if you witness any electoral any violence or oh. any um, anything you know electoral miss uh, uh any electoral issues that you may witness okay yeah. all right now there have been attacks on mps and parliamentary candidates uh, in the recent past uh, did the police say what they were doing about this you know in terms of protecting uh, these candidates mm. so they didn't give us details about protecting specific candidates but we did ask them about electoral violence and how they have responded to this electoral violence they said they gave us what they gave us were figures Mm -hmm. They didn't speak to, I think there was this specific case that was of interest to all the media organizations, the Howard Kumsin case, for example, that they said this uh, member of parliament went out there and admitted to firing gunshots. What has happened to that particular case? Mm. They didn't give us any specifics. What they told us was that a number of people have been arrested. Mm -hmm. They said that there is a task force that was put together in 2012, and that task force has been operating since. Mm -hmm. So they were referred, they had these cases mm -hmm. that we recorded during the uh, registration referred to them. Mm -hmm. Out of that, they gave us the statistics to the effect that about 204 electoral offenses were recorded. Mm -hmm. Out of that 204, they were able to arrest 310 people. Okay. And out of these 310 people that they arrested, 120 are currently under investigation. There are some of the cases that the people themselves have decided to withdraw. Mm -hmm. There are some that the people have decided to settle it among themselves. And the police say if it is a misdemeanor, they let it go they, right. because they don't, already don't have the time, the resources, so they let it go. Mm. But they said that about 10, at least 10 convictions, they've been able to, um, they've been able to secure at least 10 convictions. There have been two um, acquaintances and then there have been seven no-shows. So the cases uh, essentially have been uh, trashed trash out, but they did not give us the specifics, okay. which many people are interested in. I, I guess a question on the lips of many is what has happened to the case involving the MP for Iwutu, was it uh, Hawa? Fancy man. No, Hawa Kumsin. Hawa Kumsin. The shooting incident yes. in Kaswa. Yes. A lot of people have been asking questions about that. What's exactly. the status of the investigation? That's what I was responding to when I said that they refused to give us any specific answers. In fact, what the IGP did was to bring in 
the heads of the different departments that uh, right. exist within the police service to have mm. them answer specific questions that okay. may come up. So you have the CID, uh, the Director General of the CID, who yeah. was there, and, and the IGP called him in to answer. The, uh, the CID, Director General CID, to be, uh, to be fair to him, by the way, has asked me to reach out uh, later for us to get the details. But he gave us, you know, general, he just told us that some of these cases, and, and in fact, the IGP came on the back of that and said, Ghanaians deserve thorough Ghanaians deserve thorough um, 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 investigation. And so if you go to court without the requisite um, evidence that can pin the people down, even if they did anything wrong, mm. the case will be essentially thrashed out. out. So yes. what you want to do is to take your time and do the investigations. But of course, the point was made to them from the media that some of these things, it takes too long. Mm. All the police will say is that we're investigating. At the end of the day, it hurts um, public confidence mm. um, in the police. So we didn't get the details. But of course, we'll be reaching out to the CID for more uh, more of these details. All right, and finally, uh, Gifty, I mean, this year's elections is different because obviously we are in a COVID era and we have to be observing the safety protocols. Uh, so in that regard, what is the police doing differently as they deploy men on the ground? Well, they haven't said anything different from what we know, which is that you'll have to wear your mask. When you get there, there will be uh, stands for you to wash your hands. Mm -hmm. You have to use their... Um, um, uh, what's it called? The sanitizer. The very, Veronica bucket. The, the very, Veronica exactly. bucket, the sanitizer, the sanitizer, and then you have to, you know, maintain the. Okay. But, I mean, there have been a lot. You, you, if you look around, it looks as if people feel like it's uh, gone down a bit. We you know we're not dying as other in other countries. They're so they're saying them. they will enforce, ensure that those safety protocols are e exactly. It was to. part of his initial address, which means that it's something of importance to the police. We can listen to him. We are not forgetting COVID nineteen. And we have factored enforcement of the presidential protocols in our plans. Security personnel were forced mask wearing and social distancing at police stations. We also expect all voters to wash their hands with the equipment that will be provided by the Federal Commission at all the police stations before they present themselves to vote. Ladies and gentlemen, come December 7, 2020. The global lenses will be focused on Ghana to evaluate the potency of our So you heard the, the IGP, James Opong Bueno. Gifty is still in the studio with me. So Gifty, I mean, obviously, the political parties are major stakeholders yeah. in this process. Has this plan been shared with them? Well, as to the specifics of this plan and whether it has, it is what has been communicated, I can't tell. But the IGP indicates that in the same hall that we had that press conference today, mm. they have called the leaders of the political parties. They have called the traditional leaders, they've called the clergy or religious leaders into that same hall okay. and they've tried to talk to them about maintaining the peace. So the details of what they discussed with them could be the same, could be different. Right. And he said that they got them to commit to ensuring that they, they call their people to order. And he actually mentioned that and hopefully get them, you know, 
We'll get, get them whipped into, into, into line. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, that's Gifty. She's head of our security desk here at Joy News. You're still here on Election Brief with me, Araba Kumsen. Let's turn our attention on the Electoral Commission and Chairperson of the Commission, Jim Mensa, and the National Security Minister, Albert Kandapa, have been summoned to Parliament for questioning on preparations to ensure a free and violence-free election on 7th December. Officials of the NCC and NMC will also be appearing to respond to questions. Majority Leader Oseche Mensa Bonsu disclosed the plan to MPs a while ago in Parliament today. Parliamentary correspondent Joseph Opokugako joins us uh, on the line with more. Joseph, uh, we do know that it was a, major a minority leader, Haruna Idrisu, whose request uh, last week has led to this invitation. What more has uh, Mr. Che Mensa Bonsu been saying? Uh, he's been explaining that beyond the specific request that came from the minority leader that he wants the interior minister in the house, uh, there were other MPs who raised issues about other aspects of the election. And specifically, Roxin Lafiamako, the MP for South Dai, had asked that the Electoral Commission board should be brought in. And uh, from the explanation the majority leader gives, others have also demanded that some other entities, including the National Media Commission and the National Commission for Civic Education, be brought in. So the plan is that tomorrow, um, when uh, tomorrow Thursday, the National Security Minister will respond to questions at the plenary, and then after that, the House will then uh, reboot to a certain extent, you could call it so, and then sit as a committee of a whole. And before that committee of a whole. Other officials, including the NCC, will be responding to questions. But apart from that, the minority leader has been making additional requests. When he requested that uh, we should have, there should be a briefing on this plan for the security agencies going into the election, he asked specifically for the interior minister. But the majority leader indicated is the national security minister. So first of all, the minority leader is asking that the minister for interior, Ambrose Derry himself, should be part of the conversation to provide additional perspective. And he wants the Inspector General of Police, uh, uh, Mr. Pombuenu, to also be in the room to also respond to questions. But he, he had an additional request as well, that going forward, they would want to see a situation where the list of deployment, as far as the security officials are concerned, be provided to members of parliament. So he cited a specific example that in Tamale South, for example, as the MP, he wants to know the specific security creatives who will be in that constituency and the list be provided to him, which the majority leader indicated that this is something that would have to be left at the discretion of the security operatives and that if such a move does not breach any operation that the security agencies would have, then why not? Otherwise, then uh, they may not get that as he's asking for. I see. Uh, so, Joseph, I mean, we do know that we're about uh, 33 days to the elections. A lot of the MPs are parliamentary candidates themselves uh, going into this election. And uh, a lot of them have not been showing up in Parliament. What was the mood like in Parliament today? Did we have a lot of activity? Or, as usual, you know, a lot of the MPs were absent? It's the same story. Nothing more than uh, 30 to 40 MPs getting the business done out of the 275. And the majority leader, actually, and the minority leader both drew attention to it that tomorrow is a very interesting day with the Electoral Commission boss and the various security officials showing up. So the minority leader, Hain Idrisu, for example, was making the point that the hips on both sides, right. the majority chief whip, the minority chief whip, should get to work and get their members to show up tomorrow for that all-important conversation around preparations going into the next election so that then a lot more questions can be asked so that a lot more MPs can be abreast on the developments that are being planned going into the election. So if, if the HIPs are able to do their work as the minority leader has asked, then maybe a lot more of them will show up tomorrow specifically to ask the EC officials and the, the right. security officials. All right. Thank you so much for that update. That's a parliamentary correspondent Joseph Opoku Gapo. And the news is that uh, the Electoral Commission chairperson and the National Security Minister, among many others, will be turning up in Parliament tomorrow to answer questions from the MP regarding the December 7 elections. Now, the National Democratic Con uh, Congress candidate for the Wasa Amenfi East constituency, Nicholas Amankwa, narrowly escaped death this morning when armed men launched an attack on him in his house at uh, Wasa Ekropong this dawn at about 3 a.m. It is not clear who is behind the attack, but some members of his party managed to foil the attempt 
before major harm was done. A member of his campaign team, Douglas, gives an account of what happened earlier today. We'll bring you details of the story after this break. You're welcome back to Election Brief. Now, the National Democratic Congress candidate for Wasa Memphi East, Nicolas Amankwa, narrowly escaped death this morning when armed men launched an attack on him in his house at uh, Wasa Ekropong at about 3 a.m. It's not clear who's behind the attack, but some members of his party managed to foil the attempt before major harm was done. A member of his campaign team, Douglas, gives an account of what happened this dawn. I heard a change of gunshots. Pa, pa in our house. That's a compound. So I just stood on my bed. And three minutes later, I heard my mom screaming, are you coming to kill Nico? Are you coming to kill Nico? So I placed a call to the police. And they reported, they told me they would be coming. So I was there and voices were going on and exchange was going on. That's gunshots. So I had access to our back door. And I got into the yard of the compound and I had the opportunity to jump over a wall. So I slid over and the police later came. When the police came, I went with them to the house. And I was told by one of my boys, he is using the boys' cottage. He told me that you have heard someone saying that even Atamos was killed. Who is Nico? We are going to kill him tonight. Well, the candidate, Nicolas Zabankwa, has been recounting his side of the story. I rushed to Honorable Nicholas's house after receiving a distress call at about 3 a.m. that he was being attacked by armed men. Upon reaching the house, there was a man trying to break his way into the house with a huge stick and others standing by with guns. I heard Nicholas's mother asking why they are attacking his son. They confirmed they had come to kill him. When they spotted me, they tried to shoot me, but I managed to dodge the bullets and called for reinforcement. We started pelting stones at them. When they realized they couldn't control the situation, they escaped with warning shots. All right, now, former President John Mahama has launched a scathing attack on the special prosecutor, Martin Amidu, challenging him to proceed with investigations on his alleged involvement in the Airbus scandal. The former president described Mr. Amidu as a coward for sneaking portions of the Airbus investigation into his HFR report in a bid to equalize wrongdoing. The Office of the Special Prosecutor said it had established the identity of the elected government official one in the Airbus scandal as former President John Dramani Mahama. According to Martin Amidu, the only reason former President Mahama has not been invited for interrogation, in spite of all the threats uh, from some of his followers and lawyers, is the fact that he got himself an insurance as the presidential candidate of the other largest political party in Ghana, and he also explained that prudence dictated that the interrogation be held in abeyance during this election season. Well, addressing students at the University of Ghana yesterday, Mr. Mahama called Mr. Amidu's bluff, challenging him to proceed with his investigations if he had any basis for wrongdoing. I knew that the Japan was going to be discussed today. Is that because he was a coward, and he knew that they were going to discuss Ijapa. So put a paragraph on Airbus to equalize the discussion. I mean, what stupidity is this? Hey, Zoo. 
you know, because you are investigating a Japa. Present a report in a Japa. Why? Because you know a Japa is going to be discussed. You've indicted the president's cousin as finance minister, and you're afraid that you are presenting only a report on a Japa. So in the Japa report, put some other reports that balance the equation. I thought he was man enough. Come out. The point is, the point is, you say I'm the leader of a political party. I say, you, if you have a legal basis for investigating me, go ahead and investigate me. If you have a legal basis for investigating me, go ahead and investigate me. There's been a DPA, a Deferred Protection ad uh, Agreement. You are not a party to it. You don't know who are involved in it. They've identified some people in it. You don't have an authenticated agreement from SFO or from whoever is involved in it. And you say, I surmise that government official one is so, 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 so. Somebody, somebody is so, 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 so. On what legal basis are you, are you proceeding? But you see, the thing is, his office is important because the investigation they did on Ijapa, it's not a surprise. I said it this morning. We knew already that it was vitiated with corruption. Everything that he has found out. You see on the former president who has criticized the Electoral Commission uh, for the delay in furnishing political parties with the electoral roll, saying that with 34 or 33 days to the general elections, it leaves little time for the parties to scrutinize the register. The minority in parliament had already raised the concerns and the commission is yet to respond to the concerns, but addressing a delegation of EU ambassadors at his office in Accra earlier, the NDC flag bearer said the country is bearing the brunt of what he describes as the EC's incompetence. A lot of things have been happening, especially in the lead up to the election. To take. But um, in our country, we have a problem with the Electoral Commission. I'll talk about the economy later. But there have been incidents leading up to the election that creates a certain anxiety about whether the election is going to be transparent, free and fair, and uh, whether it's going to be devoid of you know, any chaos or disorder. And uh, we want you to take no note of it. Um, the Commission has failed to uh, follow uh, due process. In some cases, even the legal, you know, um, uh, provisions, they've fail, failed to follow it. Uh, in other cases, they've introduced uh, new um, things into the electoral process too late and too close to an election, and we're beginning to suffer the results of, of that. A late uh, registration of voters has led to late exhibition, omission of names. It gives us very little time to correct before we go into the election. And I'll just give an example. They announced that they've um, uh, uh, taken 30,000 names out of the register, you know, after you know, going through the register. They haven't published the names, and so we don't know whose names have been taken off. People are going to get there on election day, and they say, your name is not in the register. And there might be a genuine reason why they should be on the register. We've not been told, you know, who those people are, why their names have been taken up. A lot of things have gone wrong. We filed nominations with a provisional register. It's never happened in this country where you file nominations for presidential and parliamentary using a provisional register. And it's even after we filed that they said 30,000 names have been taken out. And so if a voter, you know, who believes he was registered signed my presidential nomination form and you've now taken his name out, it means that my form, you know, yes, yes, you know, so a lot of things have gone wrong, you know, in terms of the processes, but also in terms of the violence associated with the processes. Uh, you remember the by-election we had last year, which led to, I mean, quite serious uh, harm to many uh, uh, individuals. The pronouncements of government officials, you know, that that by-election violence was a dress rehearsal and that the real thing is going to happen on 7th December 
commission of inquiry was set up, identified the perpetrators of that violence, government rejected the commission's report, most of the commission's report refused to act. The same characters who were involved in that violence are today walking around still carrying the same weapons that they used to uh, cause that violence. It manifested again in during the registration uh, period, you know, people lost their lives, uh, gunshot wounds, uh, stabbing, about three people were killed during the registration. Let's say a while longer on the former president because as you know, uh, he's been rounding up his uh, five-day tour of the greater Accra region. He's also been speaking about the state of roads in some parts of the region, describing the government's year of roads initiative as a, quote, disappointment. Now, like I said, Abra, and this is what I mean. Now, make us a, a finding in our you. And so, not finding it yet. And so, and then, the dear Mafia in Madina, Adenta, Dominic Fabenia, acquire a young person. Let's just say, I say, I take your pants up. This year of roads is a big disappointment. If this is called the year of roads, then it's a very big disappointment. Because today the roads are worse than they've ever, ever been before in history. When NDC came, we were fixing the roads. We were asphalting the roads. Some in Hacho, Dominic Pabinya area. Today we look at the state of the roads in the places that we have passed. They are in a very terrible shape. And I know that with him said, uh, NDC, the best about Abe now, uh, some members of the National Democratic Congress who are running as independent uh, candidates uh, have forfeited their membership of the party. Now, this is because uh, they're running as uh, independents. The party says that this goes against their uh, laws and regulations. Uh, in a statement released uh, a while ago by General Secretary of the party, it says that uh, the NDC wishes to bring to the attention of all party members, sympathizers and the general public that the following members who sought for and obtained nomination from the Electoral Commission to contest the upcoming parliamentary election as independent candidates have forfeited their membership of the party and it proceeds to list the members. And it says, uh, one, uh, the uh, Cape Coast North, Valis Achianu, uh, has been expelled. Uh, number two, lawyer Ishmael Texan, who's uh, running in the Agona West constituency uh, in the central region, has also been expelled. Emmanuel Gadogum, Upper Dintra West constituency. Uh, Ogabe Gibson Achofsum in uh, Bosa North constituency in the Upper East has also been expelled. On Honorable Dominic Azuma, uh, who's also running as an independent in the Garu constituency in the Upper East, has also been expelled. Uh, Honorable, uh, it also includes uh, Akunya Simon, who is in Pusiga, running for the Pusiga seat in the Upper East constituency. Isaac Newton Nyagwe in the Pando constituency in the Volta region. Idrisu Al Hassan Savelugu in the Northern region. Wajanjiku Elijah. Mion in the northern region, David Tiki Dange, Daumongo in the Savannah region, Abraham Imbido, Salaga South in the Savannah region, also Dr. Bonja Ishmael Achomese Krache in Chumuru constituency in the Oti region, Sandong Fatao in the Nadoli Kalio uh, constituency of the Upper West. Owusu Ansa Emmanuel Bodhi constituency in the Western North. Kwesi Ajiman Jan Tutu Tain constituency in the Bono region. Honorable Kwejo Yame Datiakwa Kintampo South constituency of the Bono East region. Richard Angmo Nate Ningo Pram Pram, who is also contesting as an independent uh, here in the Greater Accra region. And Alpha Yusif Bung Katamanso constituency in the Greater Accra region. 
Now let's turn our attention on uh, the president, uh, Ekufuado, who has been inspecting works at the Adansit North District Hospital at Fomina in the Ashanti region, which according to the health minister is 80% complete. Health Minister Kwekwa Jumaminu says the project is expected to be completed by March next year. The inspection is part of a four-day tour of the president in the Ashanti region. Prince Apia is with the team. He joins us live with more. Prince, tell us about this facility and the, uh, the space it encompasses. Yes, um, this facility um, has stores for uh, a while now, since 2017. Uh, it was started by the um, a Tamil administration and through the John Mahama administration at the point um, it, it sold and according to contractors and government officials it was because of um, some funding challenges so um, last year government ensured that they built some uh, loan facility from the UK government and this particular uh, hospital together with others like the Kuluri hospital uh, currently um, at a and the health minister uh, emphasized that by March next year, uh, it should be complete. Uh, currently, it's at the uh, 80% completion, uh, completion level. All right. I should say that, yeah, from there, the, the Nana Akufuadu went to the uh, Fomina um, area in the Dancy North District, where he uh, met the chief and some political party leaders. And over there, he vehemently expressed his disappointment at the uh, behavior of the MP for Fomina, um, Andrew Sisiyama, who had decided to be independent despite the party's um, decision to uh, lure him to a uh, recent decision. And the president, um, together with the advanced chief and um, the education minister and all the political leaders that came there expressed their disappointment and, and, and said that uh, if this continues, a lot of development in areas where independent candidates have right. are decided to go ahead will be affected when the president uh, wins the 2020 election. So All right. um, uh, uh, that is what is happening here. Very well. Uh, thank you so much. That's uh, Prince Apia bringing us an update of the president's uh, tour of the Ashanti region. As you know, he is starting his campaign tour of that region today that will be for four days now a change of government in ghana's history has always reversed the country's development agenda that's according to vice president dr mahmoud baumia dr baumia who was also campaigning in the ashanti region last week cited the 2008 election as an example when Ghanaians voted against mpp government according to him it ruined the good works of ex-president John Ajekum Kufu. He called on Ghanaians at Swami to give President Ikufuado another opportunity to lead the country. Mahmoud Mohamed Nuruddin reports. The vice president was speaking at Swami constituency in the Ashanti region where he urged residents to vote massively for the party to continue what they have started. <laughs> National Health Insurance Scheme, Free Maternal Care, National Youth Employment, School Feeding Program, LEAP Program, Metro Mass Transport, all these intervention programs were initiated by kind courtesy of President before the MPP government. When he was leaving government, he told Ghanaians not to change NPP government and allow Nanado to continue, but they did not. We brought NDC back to government for eight years. We slept in darkness for five years, which has collapsed many businesses. The Mahama administration could not pay national health insurance. The card wasn't functional. The ambulance service collapsed. Teacher training allowance and nursing training allowance were scrapped. Arabic instructors allowance was truncated. There were no jobs due to IMF program. Nurses were unemployed after graduation. Common talk in our schools was a challenge because we had changed a government and the new government sent us backward. We go back and forth instead of going ever forward. 
I'm wrapping instructor's allowance. If you are so, the Juma, the Enuho, the Amfa, the Biawa, the Enjuma. He said, if we have a program, now, this is to give you a lesson to you, and you can see a few. If you are talking to a school, now you are proper. Now you are so sad about it. Now, Abba, now you are happy. Dr. Baumia also told them not to forget to vote for their member of parliament, Oseche Mensa Bonsu, who is bringing development to the constituency. In fact, this constituency is very lucky because you have four hospitals being built here. One at Magazine, one at Kronom by GNPC. We are introducing one district, one hospital initiative. Therefore, there will be one hospital here in Swan. Two now, as you know, the Oti region is a relatively new region and the governing MPP has been touting the creation of the region as one of its achievements. Well, Oti Regional MPP Constituency Chairman Evans Dapa says the electorates in his jurisdiction must show gratitude to President Ikufuado for giving the enclave a regional status by voting massively for him in the December polls. Mr. Dapa indicated that though the National Democratic Congress has received massive support in the traditional area since the inception of the Fourth Republic, it failed to provide the needed development projects. <laughs> The Oti Regional NPP Women's Organizer, Olivia Aglago, outlined policies and social interventions being implemented under the Agufado led government and appealed to the electorates to vote for the NPP in the December polls. <laughs> A staffer at the office of the vice president, Elizabeth Utuka, presented 13 motorbikes to be distributed to electoral area coordinators to augment their campaign activities. <laughs> Yeah. 
Fred Kwame Asari, Joy News, Likbe. Uh, let's head to Walla Wale, where supporters of the New Patriotic Party uh, say the Akufuado administration has fulfilled all its 2016 manifesto promises in the constituency. According to them, the party, since it took over the administration of this country, has delivered its promises to create jobs, establish factories, and offer free senior high school education. Speaking to Joy News at a health walk organized by the Baumia Youth Center in Walewale, the supporters said they would show their appreciation by voting massively to re-elect the party in the December polls. We don't select. We, we, we give jobs to everybody. Whether you are MPP, NDC, whoever you are, we give jobs to you. We don't select in MPP. No. Thank you very much. The free uh, senior high and everything the government is doing is perfect. Imagine the uh, zip line. First, when I came, there wasn't any way. But now I came. I saw uh, that there is a lot of work here. Zip line. I'm a uh, ref engineer. I repair air condition and install air conditions. I get job there to do. But first, previous NDC time, when I come back, I have to run back to Tema because there is no job here. Like, like I'm saying, everybody, I mean everybody in MPP should come out in members and vote for MPP again because MPP is doing marvelous work for us. Jobs, everything we are getting and we are enjoying it. We hope to come out in members and vote for Nana and Ajela to go so that they will do best for us. MPP in four years, or in less than four years, we could point fingers at a lot of developmental projects, a lot of human resource development. They are countless. Not only in Walwale, not only in Mamprogo, not only in the north, but the, but the whole country is feeling it. Planting for food and jobs. I heard one of my brothers talking about the zip line, the job it brought to our people. I'm president. So I think, for my sake, because of the free education, the free SHS, if we want to retain it, we have to make sure we vote these people back into power. NPP. And anything you will not and ever come to power again. in this mass of again. And we chase them. And yeah. they will never come back. We will continue to chase them. Even their PC, their current PC, Honorable Abuba. I am telling you, Abdullah Abuba. I am telling you, by now. He's in his room, meditating and thinking. Governor has a plan to join the NPP party. Sure, 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 sure. I assure you that after 7 December, Honorable Abdullah Abuba will endorse NPP. You're still here on Election Brief. You're taking a short break, but you want to stay because we'll bring you updates of the ongoing U.S. election. And as you see there, there's a tight battle in key states. Stay with us for details. A lot more to win. And uh, as of now, Trump... President Donald Trump has 213 confirmed electoral votes. Uh, he would need 57 more to win. A lot of you have been talking about uh, the elections on Twitter, so let's see what you have to say. And Julia Hartley Brewer writes, uh, if you think the U.S. election is crazy, your head's going to explode when you find out that elected MPs will vote today to shut down our country, destroy businesses and jobs, and steal away our freedom for another month, at least, all for a disease with a 99.9% .9 survival rate. 
All right, and uh, here's a picture of uh, Victor says, uh, me, a non-American, trying to understand how the U.S. election system works and checking the results every five minutes. So there's a lot of anxiety over who is going to win. James Melville says, in the movie Citizen Kane, a tycoon runs for political office. In advance of the election result, his newspaper prepares two headlines after the election. One headline says, Kane elected, and the other says, fraud at polls this feels spookily prophetic today hashtag u.s elections and uh g writes at uh, w scream football he says when you wake up and see biden has more votes than trump but then you remember you don't have a clue how the u.s voting system works <laughs> so that's 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 the picture depicting all of that and BBC News World writes, uh, tighter than expected, U.S. election may take days to resolve. Angela Rayner writes, uh, the Prime Minister refused to say, uh, even say that all votes in the U.S. election should count. That is one of the most cowardly statements I've ever heard. Peter Stevanovich writes, uh, on the U.S. election, will the PM join me in saying it's not for a candidate to decide which votes do and don't get counted and when to stop counting? And Boris Johnson, we don't comment. Boris Johnson's spineless, as always, at PM, hashtag PMQs. And uh, those comments will continue to pour in even as uh, we await the result of the U.S. Uh, vote there and as I indicated earlier Mr. Biden Joe Biden is leading in the electoral college votes uh, Mr. Trump has 213 as at last count he needs 57 more to um, win that electoral uh, college vote you can see there Joe Biden has 224 and um, Trump has 213 Stay tuned here on your election headquarters for all the updates on the U.S. elections. I'm Arba Kumsin. That's how we wrap up Election Brief. Same time tomorrow. Join us.